So are you ready to go live on YouTube and connect with your audience like you never have before? Well, stick around because I'm going to show you the simplest steps to get started right away, plus a few insider tips and tools to make your live streams really stand out. So let's dive in. First and foremost, you need to make sure that you have live streaming enabled. You simply do that by verifying your channel. So I'm going to show you when you go into YouTube studio over here, and then you want to navigate over to settings and you want to go to channel and you want to go to features eligibility and you'll see these options now my channel is already enabled and verified but if any of these steps you need to be in the intermediate features to be able to have videos over 50 minute custom thumbnails and live streaming and if you have not verified down here will be the options to be able to hit that, what the requirements are to verify the channel and they'll walk you through that. And then once that is done, you can start streaming. And again, the simplest way to do this, there's a lot of different layers that you can add into this to really amp up your, your live streams. But just to get started, I'm gonna show you here on the desktop the way to do that first, and then we'll talk about on the phone. And you, all you need to do simply is go up to create just like you do when you upload video. And once you have the live streaming capability enabled, you'll see it go live and you click on that. Now, when you're just getting started, go with the simplest version. And as long as you have a webcam connected to your computer, this will pop up and, and give you the option. If the webcam is not available, it'll pop up here and say there's no webcam. Having an external mic is another great step to really elevate your live stream. And then this screen will look very similar to what you have seen if you're posting any video. And so you can add a title. I'll just do live stream test for now. You can add the descriptions. This is just my default description in here. And you can add all the information, links, whatever you want in there. And then you see this goes to your webcam. You got the category and then thumbnail. This is one of those pro tips. Thinking of your live stream just like you do any other video because people are going to be able to search and find it later. Uploading a custom thumbnail is just as important with a live stream as it is with any other video. So thinking ahead and going, I know what I want to do a live stream about. I want to cover these topics, taking some good quality photos of you, adding gra graphics and titles to add a good thumbnail and having that ready to go so that you can upload it here is crucial. You can add it to your playlist. And even I have a, a live stream playlist. So you can add it into, you know, if you want a different category. And then that way, audiences that are looking for your live streams or they happen to find your live stream, they will come along that. You have your audience settings and then you just go to next. Monetization. Again, all of this is kind of standard to what you're familiar with with your video. If you're eligible for monetization, by all means, monetize your live streams. That's another great way of earning some revenue. And then a customization. Now this one's a little bit different. So you can have this set to have your live chat. So as people are watching the video, they can chat with you. And then they can also have live chat on the replay. So you have your options there. Participation mode, you can make it so that it's only available to your subscribers or available to everyone. And then you can also do like approved users. You can have live reactions or turn that off. You can have message delay so that you can kind of monitor what messages are coming in. So they have a lot of really great customization features that are available to you here. And then the next screen, you can make it so that as soon as you click go, go live, you're live. You can again have members only unlisted. Now, for example purposes, I'm going to make this private just because I'm going to do a live stream and I'm just doing this for the example of the video, but I'm going to make that private. But another great feature that I think is underutilized in lives is to schedule. And what this does is you could schedule this for an hour from now, two days from now, whatever you want. What it does is it creates the asset with the title, the thumbnail, and the video to go out so that people can start looking for it and searching what your topics are about and see, oh, this YouTuber that I follow is going live in a couple hours. I'm going to mark it to remind me. And even if they click on it and go into it, it gives them the nice countdown screen to show that the live is happening. It's a great tool to sort of build that anticipation and kind of keep you on track rather than just surprise, we're live. But again, as you're just getting started, by all means, do that first live, just click 
go public and get ready to go. All right. And then once you're here, you're going to click done. And don't worry, this is not going to make you go live yet. So you click done and we see this right here. Now, this is sort of your preview of what's about to happen. So you can get these last minute kind of looks at everything, make these last adjustments as needed. All right, now here is the button. So you have you have a share option. So you can click on that and you can share it on your Facebook, share it onto your where you want to go. Um, and then also, if you don't have a thumbnail, which I did not upload one, you got another option here to upload one, or you can take a picture and you just go, all right. And then you have that, that thumbnail is going out there with that. And then this is the button, go live and you're going to be ready to go. Uh, if it's scheduled, it'll automatically just go live at the, the scheduled time, but otherwise you are ready to go. You click go live. You can see it cycling through here, getting ready. And it says you're live. So when you're live, you could see, you know, this is sort of your dashboard that you can kind of keep and monitor everything. It shows you how many people are viewing, shows you how many people likes. Over here on the side is your chat window. So you can see people chatting and, and responding. This sometimes can be very distracting. So one of the things that I always recommend is look directly into your camera, talk to your audience as you're talking to them, and then be honest with them and tell them, hey, I'm going to look at my chat for just a second here, see what comments are coming through, look at your chat, and then you can respond to the chat in a live format, or you can chat with them and just type a response. And then once you're done and you go your allotted time that you want to live, then you sign off, you have your closing, thanks for watching, and you just click here, end stream, all right? And this tells you here, your stream will stop immediately, it will close and will no longer be live. Yes, that's what I wanna do. And it brings up this finished stream, which is kind of a neat screen that shows you how long you were live for, the total watch time average of your viewers, how many people were on there, how many people were watching at your highest peak chat, all of that, if you add any super chat, which is a nice feature, people can send a monetary thank yous to you. And then you can go to edit in studio. One of the things that I usually do is at the very least, just chop off the beginning and the end, which are usually, at least for me, are the clunkier parts of just kind of getting started. Okay, is everything working? This looks good. Everything's okay. Are we hearing? Am I coming through okay? All right, let's start the video. And I usually cut that out to be replayed later. And then sometimes at the end there is, okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And then you see your face kind of furrow as you're clicking through the buttons and, and getting the, the video to actually. So I usually cut those the beginning and end off. All right, now let's talk a little bit about how to go live on your mobile device. Now, I think in a lot of ways, this is a little bit easier because everything's sort of already contained and you don't have to worry about another microphone or another camera or anything like that. And the way that it's set up when you go live, which I'll show you here in a second, I think it's a little bit more user friendly. Again, all the same qualifications need to be, in fact, in place to verify your account and all of that. And once that's done, you go into your main page here on your mobile device and you click the plus sign here. Across the bottom here, now it came up on the live setup, but you have for the shorts or for the video, where of course they're going live. So you can see your image there. And this is where it's really key. So you have the front facing camera and the other camera, but what you wanna make sure is the little icon there on the right side of the screen looks like the phone. Uh, you wanna make sure that that is toggled the way you want it to be, whether it's vertical or horizontal. So when you hit a horizontal, now you're gonna be streaming horizontal. And when you hit the vertical, it's gonna stream vertical. I don't think that either way is right or wrong. It's just once you go live, you, there's no way to be able to change that. You'll have to stop the live stream and switch it. So I often think of it in, in these terms. If I'm gonna be going live on my mobile, I think one of the advantages is I can walk around my house or, or outside and, and show what I'm looking at. And I think vertical to me just makes more sense as people are watching it on the vertical and it's a little bit easier to hold and navigate. For this example, I'm gonna do the vertical. And then you wanna click the pencil down here and again, all the same things apply to be able to set this up the way that you want it to be set up. You can add a thumbnail, which needs to be loaded into your camera roll if it's a thumbnail you already designed, or you can take a thumbnail here, just like we did before, all right? 
And then you can add your title, whatever you want, your description. All those same elements are right in here. You click next, and then the screen's gonna pop up again to confirm if your video is made for kids. This has to do with the ad and the COPA settings. So no, it's not made for kids. And then we're gonna click go live. You see a countdown, and then we're live. Here we are, we're talking. You see all the information is still on the screen, how many people are viewing, what people are liking. The other thing that I think is really key about going live on mobile is the chat. The chat will actually appear on the screen that you're looking in. So I can see my image and I will see the chat as it comes in, which I think is a little bit easier than having to like dart your eyes back and forth. Uh, that's one of the advantages going live on your phone. So then once you're done, you click the X. It says, are you sure you want to stop recording? And you go end. And that's it. And then everything else will kind of look familiar from here. It gives you this data on the screen showing you exactly what happened while you were live and how long you were live. You click done. It takes you into your videos. And you can see here that, you know, it's processing that. And again, you can edit it or do whatever you want from there. And it's really as simple as that to start going live from your desktop or your mobile device. So go out there, go live, have some fun, and I'll see you in the next video.